Hello dear friends, I'm back with you and thank you very much for being back with me. As I promised previously, today I'd like uh, to talk to you a little bit about how to shift in uh, thumb positions. So first of all, uh, before we start talking about the shifting itself, well basically there are actually two types of shifts which I will explain and one of them is fairly similar to to how we shift here. But before that, I'd like uh, to make it clear that there are principally three, what I call them extensions. That's the way we apply our hand on the instrument in some position. So what I mean by an extension, maybe there is a better word, maybe there is a word that I don't know and you know there is a proper name to it. I just tend to call it extensions and it could be uh, narrow, middle and large extension. So what I mean by this, when we have our hands in the narrow extension, we have the minor third between the thumb and the third finger, which is minor third. When we have uh, our hand in the middle extension, which actually is sort of like maybe the most physically comfortable, most natural, let's put it this way. That's the major third between the thumb and the third, right? And the uh, large or wide extension is when we arrive to the perfect fourth between the third and the thumb. Now, uh, the way we place fingers inside, there are some options. So of course, the, you know, maybe the most common way would be something like this. Right? But it could be, or in some cases, that's a little bit trickier, but at any rate, uh, what we need to know is the distance between the third and the thumb. So when we move across the thumb positions, we have to be constantly aware of the extension we are going to use. We are using, and we have to, you know, as I said before, we have to fly ahead of the airplane. So we have to always plan in advance. Uh, now, once we are clear on this subject, uh, and by the way, by the way, uh, obviously it is very important when you move up and down that uh, the angle, you see there is a sort of a 45 degree angle, that it is maintained at all times, and that the thumb, this is really important for shifting, doesn't drag along like this. So you just, you place your hand on the instrument and you move it up and down. And you, the only thing you may want to do is just to adjust the extension as necessary. So, once we're clear on this, let's uh, actually hit the uh, shifting topic itself. Nothing different, if, well, if you're talking about the main principle, nothing principally different to how we shift here. We glide, on the finger that has played the last note and then hit next target note. Like, I don't know. So you see what happens. I'm gliding, for example, we, we start on B flat uh, played with the second and the target note is D uh, played with the third, right? So I'm gliding until the C sharp. We have already spoken about this, uh, so there is no need to uh, seriously come back to this. There is just one little touch I'd like to add to this, because there are some occasions on which you want to, you need to shift from thumb somewhere else, or to thumb, nothing different. So let's say we need to go from this G, to the C sharp played with the, I don't know, third. That means we're going to be in the middle extension. So what happened? You see, I've reached the A, and then I closed other fingers. I placed them on the string, third, second, first. This is also another little important detail. Again, like here, likewise, I mean, it's all the same. Uh, please, when you play with the third finger, all the others, including the thumb, should be on the string, actively on the string, helping the third press it down. Likewise, if you play with the second, first, 
and the thumb should be on the string. But we know this. Uh, and uh, obviously, same principle when you go in the different direction of, uh, uh, when you go backwards. Now, there is yet another way of shifting, which is uh, more common in jazz music and maybe in some solo, classical solo passages. So, uh, as an example, let's take uh, something like a uh, B flat minor 9 chord. Yeah, so what happens here? Let's uh, take, a, um, take a look at it in some sort of a slow motion. So, this is what I, what I prefer to call uh, with a word taken from the aviation. You know I love aviation and I love to compare many things to the aviation. So when an aircraft is coming in to land into a crosswind, it performs a specific technique called crabbing. So this is what I would also like to call crabbing. So what happens? We have reached the F here, right, uh, with the third, and the next note is A flat on the G and it has to be played with a thumb. So I keep the third on the F to make sure that the sustain doesn't interrupt. I place then the thumb on the target note and then I repeat the same middle extension. So I place uh, the third on the C again. Likewise, when we go in the contrary direction, when we go backwards, exactly the same, but in reverse. So you see the thumb is staying on A flat. Meanwhile, I regroup my hands and I place the third on F. Then I readjust my hands and I get back to the middle extension. And I hit the uh, D flat with the thumb again. Obviously, it could be some sort of, you know, longer chains, you know, whatever on uh, several strings. But the basic technique is this. So, as long as you know uh, these two approaches and you carefully follow them and you are always aware which sort of extension you use and also, yes, that your fingers always press down the string. I keep saying this, I know, that your um, arm uh, falls in the correct manner onto the fingerboard so you can apply your weight onto the string at all times you're going to be doing just great thank you very very much for having watched this video and uh, see you next time